my dear French benefactors, prayer warriors, my spiritual children, and all those who know me through my books, CDs, DVDs, and websites, I'm here to give a small message on Easter 2016. I begin this program by reading the account of resurrection from St. Luke chapter 24. At daybreak on the first day of the week, they took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified, bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, when these women went with the spices to anoint the body of Jesus, they never expected that Jesus was risen. Although several times they heard from the lips of Jesus, that he would be put to death and be buried and would rise again. They did not think of that or what they wanted to ask to anoint the dead body. They never expected an empty tomb. There are many people who say nowadays that Jesus did not rise again. It's a story which is made up. We know this has been talked from the beginning. We know from the narration of the resurrection from St. Matthew chapter 24. When the body of Jesus was not found, the guards reported that to the high priest. They bribed the soldiers by giving money and made them to say a lie that the body was stolen by the disciples. And the account says, the narration says, the story is prevalent even now in Israel. Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. I heard recently uh, about a film and novel written about Jesus that he was not risen again. It was Barnabas or some other disciples who were uh, crucified and uh, Jesus escaped the cross and went to India, to Kashmir or Himalaya and buried there. My dear brothers and sisters, Resurrection is a mystery, very difficult to understand, because this is something unique. There have several founders of religions in the world, but Christians have, Christianity has a founder who transcends death and who promised that resurrection uh, to the followers. That is the greatness of Christianity today. When you say that Jesus rose again from the dead. That means he went beyond the grave. It reminds us of his absolute authority, sovereignty over life and death. He is the Lord of all. He rose again. When we read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we understand the Christians in Corinth had difficulty to understand the mystery of the resurrection. That's why Paul says he was buried, he raised on the third day in accordance with the scripture and he appeared to Caiaphas, then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once. Most of them are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all to me, the unworthy. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4 on verse. There are certain historical facts which nobody can deny. Jesus was a historical person born in Bethlehem, walked around doing good for the people, uh, healing the sick, raising the dead, liberating people from the power of demon, and the fact that he was crucified. He died, he was buried, and he rose again. 
Yes, appeared to several people after the resurrection. Nobody can deny these historical facts, although people in other religions cannot understand this mystery. We Christians understand this mystery because it's a life. And we read the same chapter of St. Luke, chapter uh, 24, where the narration of the resurrection of Christ is said. The two disciples going to Emmaus. You know, they were speaking about Jesus. And Jesus, the risen Lord, went amidst them and asked them what they were talking about. And they told the story of Jesus. He died. And we read in Luke chapter 24 how Cleophas was telling about it. Hmm. There's one of them named Cleophas said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that are taking place here? He replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth who was prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is the third day. Yes, they expected the resurrection. And they were disappointed. You can see here, from the words of the uh, uh, Cleophas, they hoped that he would be the leader, the warrior, the Lord, and the Savior, etc., etc. But they lost all hope because he died as a criminal on the cross, which they could not understand. So they could not believe. And then Cleophas went on telling, some women came and told when they went to the tomb, his body was not found. They were not prepared to believe the story of the women. Hallelujah. They could not believe. And then we see again, uh, Jesus took bread and said a blessing. That means Jesus celebrated Eucharist with them. And the word of God says, Then their eyes were opened. Hallelujah. They recognized him. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, the message of the resurrection of Jesus is that he is alive. Today he is alive amidst us, where we can see him, touch him, no much more. We can eat his body and drink his blood. That is in the Holy Eucharist. Every day in the Holy Mass, we hear the word of Jesus said by the priest, taking the bread. This is my body. This is the risen body of Christ, which we can see and experience and receive the blessing Jesus has brought by his resurrection. Yes, whoever may deny the resurrection, the great mystery of the resurrection of Jesus. We Christians know that he's alive and he is living with us. And that's the message of Easter. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul goes on defending the resurrection of Jesus, saying that if there was no resurrection from the dead, there would have been no Christ raised. That means the resurrection of Christ is the fundamental truth of Christianity. It is one of the greatest mysteries of Christianity that Jesus rose again. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 onwards, he says, if the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. If Christ had not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Yeah, he goes on telling. If you say Jesus did not rise again, that means you are still in your sin. Nobody brought salvation. It is by the resurrection from the dead that Jesus brought salvation. He rose again. And we too rose again with him in baptism. Very beautifully, it is expressed in Romans chapter 6, verse 4 onwards. We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. Hallelujah. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, 
we must know how a Christian who believes in Christ and follows Jesus is risen with the Christ. It is by the virtue, the grace of baptism. In baptism, one is buried with the Christ, dying with the Christ. You know what St. Paul had said, I am crucified Jesus on the cross so that it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Yes, then a Christian is believing in Christ, following in Jesus, following Jesus and become a disciple, become a Christian, he is dying to the past and becoming a new creature in Christ and he is a risen being. And, and if you don't believe this fact, we are saying that we are still in our sins. We are no hope. We are no resurrection. And we are, our sins are not forgiven. It is because of the fruit of the power of the resurrection, my children, we have forgiveness of sin in confessions. And we experience Him directly as a living God in the Holy Eucharist. All the seven sacraments have power, grace, because of the resurrection of Christ. It is from the risen Lord the power comes to us. In all liturgical actions, we experience the power of the risen Lord. And we read in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. If you then were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. It is a wonderful mystery that we Christians are a risen people and we walk with him in our life, looking towards heaven, eternal life. Why today many find difficult to believe in the resurrection of Christ or even about their own resurrection, both are in the twinkle, they are connected. Many have Ho lost hope about life after death. As you know, I had an experience of life after death. I saw hell, I saw heaven, and I saw purgatory. There is life after death. There is a resurrection. Yes, we will be rewarded for all good things we have done and will be punished for all the bad wickedness we have done after our death. And he is the judge. Jesus is a judge. He will come as a king and uh, give us the resurrection of the body. We know from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, on the last day, all those who are alive and those who die will rise again with the body. A resurrection will happen to everyone. And that's the reason on earth, a Christian or one who believes in Christ and one who receives the Holy Spirit should live a life according to God's will. We know God's will is the holiness of life. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. And must be united with the Christ every time. We must know our identity as a Christian, as one who is risen with the Christ. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God which you are is holy. St. Paul goes on telling, every Christian is a holy temple, carrying the Holy Spirit within himself and herself. That's the reason one should live a holy life. And he says, if we don't live a holiness of life, the temple that we are will be destroyed. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he goes on telling, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Hallelujah. We have been purchased. We have been purchased by the precious blood of Christ. Actually, we were under the slavery of sin. Slavery of Satan. Jesus by his death on the cross 
delivered us from all that. And by his resurrection, he joined us with his body. With his body. And we have become one with him. This is uh, my dear brothers and sisters what happens every day in the Holy Eucharist. When we eat his body and drink his blood, we become one with him. John chapter 6 verse 56. If you eat my body and drink my blood, I will be in you, you will be in me. Yes, the Lord wants that we be united with him through the Holy Spirit. That happens in every sacrament. Union with Christ, union with Christ. Uh, that is the life of a Christian with Christ Jesus the Lord. And we read, we must glorify God in our body. We have to respect our body, love our body. And we know one day this body will rise again and stand before the throne of God for judgment. So we have to keep our body holy and present ourselves to God as holy persons. We read in uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. I urge you therefore brothers by the mercies of God to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourself to this age but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. Yes, when we live life in holiness with the risen Lord, persecution, trials, killings, bloodshed uh, may happen as it is happening today. But this hope of resurrection gives us power. We heard recently uh, one of the Salvation priests uh, in the Gulf countries, Oman, sorry, in Yemen, is kidnapped and tortured. Some say rumors that he's going to be crucified, etc. And we know four sisters of the congregation of Mother Teresa were put to death along with many others. And many Christians are killed by Aishi, Aishi and also by Boko Haram and many other uh, uh, terrorist groups. So time Christianity is going through big persecution big tortures, why it is happening and amidst this, why these people have this courage to uh, face this uh, situation? The hope in the resurrection of the Lord. We see in the Bible, the book of Maccabees, that is in the Old Testament, how 2nd Maccabees chapter 7, a mother and uh, seven children were tortured by King Antiochus. We know they were put to death and their hands and legs were maimed and some of their skin were uh, erased and all this happened. I just want to read something from 2nd Maccabees chapter 7 verse 7 onwards. When the first brother had died in this manner, they brought the second to be made sport of. After tearing off the skin and hair of his head, they asked him, Will you eat the pork rather than have your body tortured limb by limb? Answering in the language of his forefathers, he said, Never. So he too in turn suffered the same tortures as the first. At the point of death, he said, You accursed friend, you are depriving us of this present life. But the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his law that we are dying. See the hope of resurrection among these young children. Again we see verse 13 on verse. After he had died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. When he was near death, he said, It's my choice to die at the hands of men with a God-given hope of being restored to life by him. And for you there will be no resurrection to life. Hallelujah. What a boldness, what a courage in proclaiming the, the hope in the resurrection after death. Not only in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament we see the faith they had. All these seven children uh, putting their faith uh, in the resurrection. And we see the mother, good mother, the widowed mother, uh, telling the children, uh, verse 22 onwards, 
I do not know how you came into existence in my womb. It was not I who gave you the breath of life, nor was it I who set in order the elements of which of you is composed. Therefore, since it is the creator of the universe who shapes each man's beginning as he brings about the origin of everything, he in his mercy will give you back both breath and life because you now disregard yourself for the sake of his law. See the love for the law, you know what law? To eat a piece of pork. <laughs> you know, according to the law, the Jews were not allowed to eat pork. And King Antiochus, a pagan, wanted them to eat that. And they said, no, we keep the law. Here we see the love for the law. You know what Jesus said? If you keep the commandments and law, you love me. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Today, how many of us, we Christians, we Catholics, keep the commandments of God and commandments of the church? Uh, if only we keep the commandments of God and love God, uh, surely we have that hope of resurrection. Hope of resurrection. We know Christianity is growing everywhere in spite of this persecution. We know in Asian countries, African countries, they are growing in millions. Recently, I read in the newspaper, uh, uh, Catholics alone, 1.3 billion in the world. Hallelujah. Yes, through the blood of these martyrs, church is growing. Church is growing. Let's thank and praise God. That's what is happening today. Now, this Christianity would not have been there if Jesus was not risen. That's what I want to say. You know the disciples, eh, they went back to their work after the death of Christ. They were disappointed. We know Peter went for fishing. But as other disciples also went to their old work because they never expected that Jesus would die as a criminal. Along with the other Jews, I'm sure they expected Jesus to do a great miracle on the cross and come down from the cross. But they're disappointed. That's why we see the two disciples going to Emmaus were saying their disappointment. We thought that you would be the leader. We thought you might be the redeemer. But now it's the third day. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Uh, that's what uh, they were telling. And if Jesus had not been risen and lived amidst them, there would have been no Christianity, my dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Now we know Christianity, Christendom, is the biggest religion in the world uh, with more than one and a half billion with all denominations uh, following Christ, following Christ, believing Christ in spite of being persecuted and tortured by the enemies. So, in this occasion, my dear brothers and sisters, my message for you is to stand firm in your faith in the risen Lord. Stand closer to Him through the grace you received in baptism and other sacraments. Yes, and not to allow your body to go to death by sin. That means uh, offering your bodies uh, to the Lord Jesus so that He may keep you safe and uh, we should not be afraid of all these enemies. Jesus said which enemy we have to be afraid of enemy that can kill our souls. Hallelujah. None of this Boko Haram or IC can kill your souls, my soul. It is in the hand of the Russian Lord. Have this faith and go ahead with the power and don't be disappointed, don't be sad. Pray for the, the church that is persecuted surely. The Russian Lord knows everything. He's looking at the church which is his body. Have this faith in your heart, my dear brothers and sisters. Jesus is his son. And he is living with us, he is alive. Hallelujah. And every day, have the opportunity to go and meet him in the Holy Eucharist and become one with him by eating his body and drinking his blood. And then you will have the power, power, grace to withstand any situation. And not only that, to proclaim that he is Lord. We see, uh, after they met Jesus, and experienced the resurrection of Christ and received the Holy Spirit. Uh, fearlessly they went down proclaiming Jesus is Lord. They were beaten, they were put into prison, they were persecuted. The disciples, the apostles were not shaken at all. We know the early church was persecuted as it is persecuted today. And the church grew, church grew. So the risen Lord is with us. And I pray the power of the risen Lord Clad you with the courage.
cover you with the courage, with the power, so that you may praise God in all the situations that is happening. And I pray that you may have a blessed, holy, happy Easter. I wish all of you once again a happy Easter. Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. May the risen Lord shower his richest blessings on you, your children, grandchildren, and all your near and dear ones, and on your family. And may our church grow, grow powerful in spite of the present crisis and situation. And let our church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, bringing all humanity, all even the persecutors like uh, St. Paul, uh, who persecuted the church, became Christian, that they may believe in Christ and find salvation. Let's pray for that. Close your eyes. I pray for a second for all of you. Lord Jesus, thank you and praise you for this Easter of 2016. I bring all my listeners to your heart. Lord, bless them. Sanctify them. Thank you, you are risen. We know that you died. You were crucified. You were buried. Third day, third day you, you rose again. And you give the power of that resurrection to the baptism under the sacraments. And we see you directly, face to face in the Holy Eucharist. Thank you for all this. Now bless these, my children, to whom I am giving this message with love, peace, joy, grace, power. Some of them are sick, Lord. Touch them and heal them. Some of them are still under the power of darkness and Satan. Liberate them, Lord. Some of them do not know the truth of resurrection. Open their heart that they may uh, see the power of the resurrection. They may see that Jesus is alive in them. Lord Jesus, I see some of them with the doubts, with uh, problems in life, and with anxieties, fears. Liberate them, Lord. I bring them over to your sacred presence, that your presence may cover them and protect them. I see so many in the Gulf countries, and especially in India, in Pakistan, and Islamic countries, and also in African countries with much fear about the persecution. Send your Holy Spirit, spirit of courage, that they may face any situation, that they may be ready even to give up their life for Jesus Christ, so that they may find resurrection with the Christ in heaven. That is their hope. If there are people here without hope in life after death, oh Holy Spirit, Lord, come. Open their heart, give that hope, and so that they may go courageously without going away from Christ and the church. Bless them, Lord. Mary, Mama, good mother, you witnessed the resurrection of Christ. You who always with the church. Bless all these people. Pray for all these people. To your immaculate heart. I present all these people to your son. May Almighty God bless all of you. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter. God bless you. Maria.